Alright guys, it's Radian, and for today's video I want to give an overview on how shield generators work and their usages and in the background we've got footage of me using some shield generators here um, the footage is about one minute in length so we'll just loop over it so I can you know express all my thoughts in this commentary and so first thing shield generators they just recently came out with Heart of Thorns there's really just one skill I want to talk about on the shield generators which is skill 3 the force dome and that's really the only reason I even ever use shield generators and so it looks a lot like the catapult uh, bubble skill and really the differences are the catapult bubble skill lasts for three seconds and the shield generator force dome lasts for 12 seconds according to the skill description which we'll get into in a second and on top of that you can aim the force dome um, it's a ground target skill with 2200 units of range on a basic shield gen um, if it's superior shield gen you'll have 3300 units of range and so Right here in this video, you can see we're just force doming our catapult. So there's two ways offensively to use your shield generators. Um, the first way I'm going to talk about is backing up your shield generators pretty far from your siege and just force doming the siege. And so that's what we're doing here. So if you're going to do that, the best thing the defender can do is try to take out your shield generators first because you're force doming your siege, not your shield gens, and then work on your siege after the force dome. Excuse me, after the shield generators are taken out. So what's the benefit of this right here well if you back up your shield gens far enough it's not going to count towards the siege cap there is a siege cap of five siege items within a thousand units of each other it does not apply to flame rams it does not apply to golems when you have them manned it does apply to golem build size but anyway um, the, the purpose of this is to not apply to the siege cap you have to have somewhere that you can place your shield generators that you think there's not much of a chance that can be taken out by anything else so that's why we put them here in this really sneaky spot. And so the second way to use shield generators offensively is to put them right next to your siege. So why would you do that? Well, if you put your shield, uh, shield generators right next to the siege, well, now you can force dome your siege and your shield generator with the same force dome. So the force dome does protect siege. The force dome buff will be applied to siege, which I'll get into in a second. And the force dome will protect the siege users. So if there's not really any safe spot to put your shield generators, maybe you're using open field catapults or rams or alphas, you'll basically put your shield generators next to your siege and you'll force dome your siege plus you'll force dome your catapults plus your shield generators with the same force dome. And so remember you don't always do that because of the siege cap. But anyway, I want to talk about the actual force dome. So the description says it lasts 12 seconds, but the actual dome lasts 10 seconds, even though it says 12. Um, now I've tested it out, and about a second after the actual dome goes away, it still absorbs projectiles. And so what projectiles does it absorb? Well, catapult shots, mortar shots, trap shots, ballista shots, and cannon shots. And it will negate arrow part damage if you have max mastery. And so if you have max mastery, you'll put a force dome buff on the siege and players that are inside the force dome, and you can even move your mouse over to see the buff. So you, I want to make it make sure you guys understand there's a difference. There's the actual dome that you can see on your screen, and there's the actual force dome buff that you can see on players in siege if you click on them. And the actual force dome buff is what negates arrow cart damage if you have max mastery. So I have tested it out. If you want to keep the actual dome up, you need three shield generator users. If you want to just keep the buff up that negates arrow cart damage, you just need two, two shield generator users. So what's the what's the trick, I have, I have a trick for um, coordinating the alternating of the force dome with three shield generator users. So right now you see we're doing that, we're not actually talking to each other and we're not actually even looking at the force domes that the other people are using. There's a trick. Basically Every 10 seconds, someone force domes, but each individual person, like me, I force dome every 30 seconds. My other shield generator user person, they force dome every 30 seconds. The third person, they force dome every 30 seconds, but we're all 10 seconds apart. And so what's the trick? Well, if you look at the score ticker at the top of your screen, you have minutes and seconds. When you just look at the last two digits, that's the amount of seconds. So the way you do it is, you tell one person, okay, when the last two digits of the scoring ticker are 55 and 25, force dome. You tell another person, you're in charge of when the last two digits of the scoring ticker are 45 and 15. Tell the third person, you're in charge of 35 and 5. And so now, you don't even have to talk to each other, you don't even have to really look at each other's skills or anything. 
you just look at the scoring ticker you can even type out the stuff on your screen and just not hit enter Type out the timing for yourself and just force dome there and that's how you do it so force domes and chips and raiders honestly i think they're a little bit really quite a bit better offensively than defensive i'll get into the defensive users in a second but offensively we've talked about how to use them when they're really far back or when they're on your seat i do want to talk real quickly about shield generators when you're ramming or using alphas so if you go up to a gate and there's a lot of arrow carts um, and you have to take the gate let's say maybe it's stone mist there's no wall there um, you can build uh, shield generators pretty close to the gate and then build your rams and you'll actually be force doming your rams plus the shield generators plus the ram users plus the shield generator users so if you just have two shield generators and then you spend the rest of your supply on rams it doesn't matter if they have five spear arrow cards anymore you're force doming to negate all of that so that'll bypass arrow cards now what's another reason why you might use them when you're attacking a gate well what if they have a gate trip the gates are so thin you can force dome the whole gate and much further back so if someone's using a gate trap, they're using trap shots that land at their own gate to do damage. Well now, you force dome the gate, and the gate trap shot will not land at the foot of the gate. It'll actually land on the force dome, which will absorb the shot. So this will also bypass gate traps. So let's talk real quickly about shield generators defensively, which I said is not really as good as they are on offense. Why is that? Well, shield generators do not protect against splash damage. What I mean by that is, when you're, you can force dome your own wall. So let's say you're force doming a wall to prevent catapult damage, or at least trying to. You cannot force dome the entire wall because the walls are so thick and wide. Now, if someone's trying to catapult a wall and their catapult shot lands on your force dome, it's absorbed. But what if it does this? What if it lands at the foot of the wall, which is not where your, for, uh, your force dome doesn't cover the foot of the wall? Or let's say, not the foot of the wall, let's say a little bit in front of the wall, 300 units in front of the wall. Your force dome covers the whole wall, let's say, but their shot lands 300 units in front of the wall. Will the splash damage go through the force dome and damage the wall? Yes, it will. So this does not protect against splash damage. The only way for this to negate catapult tread damage is for the actual projectile to land on the force dome. So that's why force doming walls is pretty unreliable. You can do it, but if someone's catapult or trap is placed such that they have the option of force doming, assuming they have the option of trebbing in front of the wall or on top of the wall you cannot force dump both you're gonna have to pick as a shield generator user and depending on how many catapults and traps they have how frequently they're firing like i said the shield generator has to pick what if they're alternating it's just tough you can't really do that um, what about force dome and gate for defense well there is one very specific reason why you might use force dome to protect a gate on defense and that is to stop the omegas like i said unlike walls the gates are really thin so you can force dome the entire gate as well as pretty far forward and behind the gate. So if someone's using Omegas, well those are projectiles. You can force dome the gate and just have two or three shield generator users doing that. And the Omegas will be completely shut down. Won't protect against rams, won't protect against alphas. But force doming your own gate will protect against Omegas. And they're not going to be doing any damage to you on the gate. But what might Omega users do there? They might switch to the wall. Like I said, walls are thicker and wider, you cannot force on the entire wall. Omegas will just find a place to stand, and Omega attacks do have splash damage again. So they could even put their face all the way forward to the wall to try to obstruct and just get the splash damage going. All different sorts of things Omegas can do, even if you're shield genning or force doming, if they go to a wall, but not really on the gate. But anyway, that's pretty much an overview of how shield generators work. If you guys still have any more questions, you are welcome to ask in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I see it. And that wraps up this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching.